2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 through 22. Again, we read, For all, how many? All, all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. amen. In him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Now, he which establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us, is God who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. The earnest, that, that word is like, a, it's like a, a, a down payment or what some have pointed out, it's like an engagement ring. The sealing of the Holy Spirit, the giving of the Holy Spirit to us before the wedding is like, it's a sealing the deal. We, in, in Israel, in Old Testament Jewish custom, We would already consider ourselves as married. Even though we haven't actually gone through the fulfillment, we are married. And it would take an awful lot for us to be divorced and lost. So see, when you you think about the Holy Spirit, think about you're wearing an engagement ring. Uh, Again, in in 2 Timothy 2, verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So that part's there. We still need to depart from iniquity, right? But that's something we do because we are sealed or we are saved now there's one more uh, one more slide on this with the guy with the thing on his forehead here we're jumping to revelation chapter 14 one here because i want you to see that this in regard to the 144,000 you notice this is they have the 144,000 i don't have the whole scripture there but it says having his father's names written in their forehead and notice i changed the seal to i am now, I could have put the, the Hebrew word name for God. I mean, that rel- would be just as relevant, right? But this one was, I didn't have any work to do. I just took it off the, you know, right off the internet. But the 144,000 have the I am, or the, the nations, and I am, but the name of God in their forehead. You think, well, well, that sounds different than what the church has. Except for these scriptures here, uh, these next two scriptures are Revelation chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 2. That's talking to the seven churches. And look what it says. It says, I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of God, which is in Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven, and I will write upon him my own new name. Well, where's he going to write it? On their head, I believe. On their head. And he's talking to the church, not the 144,000 here. And then he will give... A white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that receiveth. So once again, there's a name. There's a name of the Father. There's a name of the a holy city. And uh, the, whatever that new name, you know, when he talks about uh, in Revelation chapter 19 when he's coming, he says he has a new name that nobody knows. And so uh, there's no sense arguing about what it is because nobody knows. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, back to the 144,000. And there were, see, we're coming back here, there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel. So, I hope I've impressed upon you. We don't have to look outside Israel. God is very clear. He said it 12 times. It's Israel, right? Who, who is Israel? Okay, so here's the 12 sons of Jacob, which Jacob is Israel. And there they are, all 12 of them. And this is what we should see there when it's talking about Revelation chapter 7. However, let me show you another slide, and it's a little different. It's still the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, can anybody tell me what changed? Huh? Ephraim's different. Okay, so Ephraim's there. It wasn't before? Is that what you're saying? We still have 12, though, and we just added one. Okay, what, what else? Okay, so jo- Joseph... Okay, yeah, you, so he's going back. But yeah, exactly. Ephraim and Manasseh have been added. Joseph and Levi have been removed. Okay. 
But we still have 12 tribes of Israel. So why is that? Well, Levi was chosen to be the priesthood. And God said, I am your inheritance. So you don't need an inheritance. So what he did is he took their portion and he gave a second portion to the firstborn. Because the firstborn was supposed to get a double portion. However, who was the firstborn? Israel. No, firstborn of Israel. Firstborn of Reuben. But after he invented that Reuben sandwich, we don't see very much. You know, he's, he, lost, he lost that double portion. And we don't need to get into why. He was bad. Okay, we don't need to get into why, but it's a very interesting story. But um, just for time, I, I, I mean, we don't have to get into the whole thing. But so Reuben actually lost that double portion, and who got it? Who did? His sons, Ephraim, are there his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh? Ephraim and Manasseh are Joseph's sons. And that's why when we added Ephraim and Manasseh, we, we got rid of Joseph, see? All right? So this is the list we would expect to see in Revelation 7, and then everything would be hunky-dory, right? Did I say something wrong? No, he splashed it. Stop flashing, <laughs> you flasher. Now we have another predict. Oh, my goodness. In Revelation chapter 7, we got a listing of the 12 tribes of Israel, but two are gone. Two are gone, and yet, how many do we have? 12 tribes. Well, that's kind of weird. We got Joseph back, but we still have Manasseh, see? See, before we had Ephraim, right? Now we've got Manasseh. Joseph replaced Ephraim. What is the other change? There's another change. Go back to where the X's were. Oh, look at that. Dan and Ephraim got kicked out. Right? They, maybe they got kicked out for smoking. Who's there? Who came back? Levi's back. And it makes perfect sense because Levi didn't do anything wrong. But the priesthood, the Jewish priesthood is gone. Right? There's no more Jewish priest, priesthood. Christ is the new priesthood, right? The church is the royal priesthood. Levi now gets part of the inheritance. Manasseh still has his peace. Ephraim had to turn his over back to Joseph, who's his father. So Ephraim kind of got kicked out. His name did. But what happened to Dan? Where's Dan? Dan! <laughs> I don't know. Let, well, let, let's see. Why is Dan missing? In Judges, if you read the green part, uh, You'll see, you see the whole point here. Dan was the first tribe to lead Israel into idolatry. Now, that's a big deal. And the scripture is in Judges 18, verse 30 through 31. And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, and the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests. Wait a minute. They weren't supposed to be priests. Levi was the priest, right? They were priests. He and his son were priests to the tribe of Dan who set up this image until the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up Micah's graven image which he made all the time that the house of God was at Shiloh. So Dan caused lots of problems. Right? Oh, look at this. But Ephraim's gone too. So what do they have in common? Well, Hosea tells us. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. So both of them seem to have been kicked out because of their idolatry. And we, we've introduced another concept here, Jeroboam. Everybody know who Jeroboam was? Jeroboam was the king that God chose to be over the northern kingdom. God actually chose this guy. 
God would have backed him. God would have been faithful to him. But Jeroboam had to do things his way. Remember that there was two tribes, that Israel became two tribes, or two nations. One was the ten tribes up in the north, which the king was Jeroboam. Then you had the kingdom of Judah, which was led by Rehoboam, which was the son of Solomon. Now, which kingdom had the temple? Remember, Solomon built the temple. Where was the temple? The temple was in Jerusalem, which is in the southern kingdom. Okay? Jeroboam, he wants to set up his own religion. Years of rebellion against God followed during which the people led by some of their worst kings turned to idol worship and other gods. God's constant warnings were largely ignored. I think we have the same thing happening today. I mean, talk about a prophetic pattern. God is... I mean, if anybody should hear God's warnings, we should hear it today, and yet they're largely being ignored. And the people of the ten northern tribes called Israel were conquered in 721 B.C. by the Assyrians. So you had, in essence, historically, you had two Jewish kingdoms. You had, on, on the left here, you had ten northern tribes in Israel. You had two southern tribes in Judah. You had Jeroboam, the king in Israel. You had Rehoboam in Judah was the king. Um, and down here, skipping one, we had Samaria. Samaria. You heard about the Samaritans? Samaria became the capital of Israel. Jerusalem was the capital with the temple in Judah. You have a couple other things of interest here, though. In Israel, they were encouraged to bow down and worship idols by the king and everyone else there. And, they, they, uh, and he appointed false priests. He made his own priesthood. The, Le- the Levites weren't there. And initially the Levites were in the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And by his action, he, t- he basically told the Levites, we don't need you, we're going to have our own priesthood. And he took the lowest of the lows. Like, you know, the, the people that were, couldn't do anything else, he made them priests. And then you also had, uh, just to throw it in, Ahab and Jezebel were evil rulers and did not escape God. They were in Israel. And so uh, here in the the bottom here, we say the establishment of idol worship uh, took place at Dan and Bethel. What that is referred to is Bethel was located in the land of Ephraim. And Jeroboam, by the way, was from the tribe of Ephraim. And Dan was the northern nation and Dan was a willing accomplice because Jeroboam said, do you remember what the idol was that he set up? Anybody remember? Well, no, not um, that, that, that was different. Um, I'm talking about when he, when he did this with the nation. That was before in Judges. But when, when the divided kingdom, this is almost word from, it's almost a complete pattern of what Aaron did when Moses went up to the the calf, the golden calf the same one that they worshipped in Egypt which God did all that to bring them out of so Jeroboam has this idea and he says almost a word for word quote he says these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt he set up his own priesthood he set up his own religion you can see the whole thing in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28 through 33. Um, the whole story here, whereupon the king took counsel, made two calves of gold, and said unto him, It is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Behold, thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan, that land of Dan. And he and see, Dan is a willing accomplice of this idolatry. This thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one unto Dan. He made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month. When is the Feast of Tabernacles, by the way? It's in the seventh month. 
on the 15th day. Well, he made his feast day on the 8th month on the 15th day, like the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made, so he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the 8th month, notice it's repeated, God wants us to get that, even in the month which he had devised in his own heart. And right there what the scripture is saying, just because you think it's okay to invent something does not mean God endorses it. See, he, he devised it in his own heart and he ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. He offered upon the altar. He burnt incense. But you know what? It goes back to Cain and Abel. Remember, Cain didn't worship God the way Abel did. And that's what it goes back to. It goes back to the Word of God. 